Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sports top athletes and the people who shape the game. Brought to you by Fit to Curl, a sports-specific guide to training for the world's greatest game by John Morris with me, Dean Gemmel. Available at fittocurl.com and at many pro shops. It's an interesting read and a guide that can help curlers of all levels make a few more shots, sweep more effectively, and feel better on the ice. The third on the team that captured the 2009 Grey Power World Cup of Curling, Richard Hart, welcome back to the Curling Show. Yeah, hi, Dean. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Uh, First, let's talk about the event itself just passed. Uh, You're a Greater Toronto Area curler. Uh, It was, in some ways, I guess, the typical struggle for crowds in in Mississauga, but they weren't bad, and uh, I know a lot of people put a lot of work into the event. Uh, What's your take on it? I I thought it was terrific. I thought the crowds were good, and I and you're right about uh, the work that went into the event. Uh, a lot of people spent uh, probably close to two years promoting it, and uh, you know, being from Toronto, I'm I'm proud they were able to pull it off. I think they they, they did a great job. The uh, the Toronto Curling Association. Yeah, you know, I'd have to agree there. And uh, you know, they had good media coverage of the event. I mean, uh, the event was on the uh, you know had good play in the Toronto sports uh, pages, so that was good to see. Yeah, that's um, never easy to, to to break curling into the into those pages. So uh, they did a good job with that, and even comparing it to some of the other slams. I mean, it's uh, I've been lucky enough to play in in most of them, and uh, it's right up there in the top five for me. I would say. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, well done to everybody there. They, they actually had three people from three reporters from the Globe and Mail in the press box one day, which uh, must have been right? a record for a curling event. Wow. Hey, uh, compare the field, however, to uh, to other Capital One Grand Slams. Uh, the big international presence. How you know what, what's in terms of uh, strength of field? How would what would you say it was? Well, um, it's you know it's difficult to to compare, especially after the event, because you know some of the teams didn't fare as well as I, I thought they would have. But going into the event, I thought they were comparable. You know, having uh, Murdoch and Olsrud to you know top 10 teams in the world uh, I believe they are on the, on the ranking so um, you know and then you're missing you know Madaw Stoutens those kind of guys um, comparable but yeah I would say mo- most uh, most of the, the the top curlers would say that it might not be quite as tough as a as a you know at the risk of you know I don't want to insult the, the international team spark an international uh, incident but uh, yeah, yeah absolutely I mean they're they're Excellent teams, but uh, the, the the competition may have been a little uh, a little softer than than normal. Yeah, and I mean, you saw. Well, I mean, the fact uh, Team Murdoch really struggled, I guess. Throws. Yeah, throws that away. was a surprise. I think you know everybody found that surprising. Any and other Furby surprises well, that? Right? Uh, any other surprises that you take away from the event? Yeah, well, Furby's team. Uh, yeah, you know they didn't play well. I think uh, I'm not sure, but I think Dave might have been injured. He he was struggling with the. Uh, a neck injury of some sort, I think, uh, that may have affected their play. I'm not sure, but that, you know, that was a surprise for them to go two and four and not make the playoffs. Um, but uh, outside of that, I, you know, I don't think there was too many surprises. What do you think about the uh, 14 teams qualifying eight? Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? Uh, definitely, you know, as a player, it's all right. I mean, <laughs> better chance of uh, right. making the playoff round. But it, you know, I. I I don't know whether they didn't have ice or time, but it, it would have made more sense to go to a 16 team uh, and do the, the typical three pools that we do. Um, I, I like that draw a little better. I think it's a little more fair. And uh, I still like eight qualifiers. I, I heard some people talking, if you're going to do the 14 to do like a six qualifiers with uh, the top two teams going direct to the semifinal, that kind of format. Yeah, it's sort of a modified page. Yeah, yeah, which is it's a decent format, but uh, you know, I'd prefer to have eight qualifiers. Just you know, have a few more teams there. Yeah, let's talk about the final game against uh, Team Cooey. Uh, you guys quickly fell behind, but uh, yeah. then seemed to, uh, as as is uh, your want as a team, I guess you uh, you, you never sort of panicked and and uh, as as we don't expect Team Howard to do, but but you just chipped away, and and by the end, uh, I think it. You know, you, you were sort of, you know, even even though Kevin had a shot to win, you, you felt like you were in control. How did you feel on the ice? Yeah, you know, uh, it's funny uh, you, ask, you ask that. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, when, because the first end you, we gave up two, being a steal of two, you know, the perception is you're in worse shape than you really are. But 
to give up two or have two stolen in the first end, at the end of the day, it's the same. It's the same thing, right? You're down two points uh, with Last Rock, and uh, and um, it, it just hurts a little more because we did have Hammer. But uh, you know, it's a position we find ourselves in all the time, and and it's not uh, insurmountable. So we've been lucky enough to come back from that before. Now it's funny. Um, I had uh, I had read the uh, the blog on the the, uh, the curling news the next morning as I quite often do on Monday mornings, and uh, I got Matt Hames' pers- perspective of the game and it, it was quite different than mine and uh, you know a- as in curling you know happens quite often in curling perception is is everything and uh, from our position you know I felt like we were you know we were kind of on the most of the game after the first end but uh, you know uh, Matt had felt that. Um, that they were kind of on us for the first four Like a cheap ends. suit, I think he Twittered. He said. Yeah, I think he did say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, being a journalist, right, he's got to liven things up a bit. But, sure. no, I didn't feel that way at all. I felt that uh, the first, even the first end could have gone the other way. Uh, Glenn and I made a, a sweeping error on my last. If we had swept my uh, my last rock a little bit, we would have had a nice situation. Uh, it, would have, it overcurled as it was and left Kevin uh, with a... He made a terrific shot, but it was there. He came came around, ta- come around, tap back, and and stayed sort of frozen on us. If we if ours hadn't curled as much, we would have stayed frozen for shot, and uh, so we would have laid one three and and frozen. So, you know, it's a small little things in a game, right? And uh, and um, you know, it, it worked out for us. It was a terrific win, and uh, we played hard. And wins like that always uh, feel a little sweeter. Talk about your team for a moment. I, you know, we talking, we're touching just briefly here on the fact that uh, you guys do seem to have, in my opinion, maybe a, more of an ability to come back from being down. Uh, and I don't quite know. I, I don't know if Jerry Gertz and his statistics would bear that out, but that's my in, that's my instinct that you're you're able to mount comebacks maybe better than a lot of teams. But in some ways, you guys are a bit of a throwback team, and I don't mean in the fact that you have uh, two veterans at the uh, at third and skip and a younger front end. I mean that. Uh, you know, your your first instinct isn't to throw the big run back or to throw the big weight hit, although you guys can throw those. You, you play a, a game that uh, maybe has more in common with, uh, you know, Eddie Wernick's team from the from the 80s a little bit. Um, right. do, do you agree with that? And do, and do you think uh, too many teams uh, sort of ignore that style of play? You no, know, I do agree with it. I, I think, it, you know, I, I'm flattered to be compared to that team. I mean, growing up, uh, I was a big fan of those guys and, and still am and, and the style of game they played and how they really, you know, brought us to where we are now. I mean, they changed the, the face of curling, and that's, you know, Ed and Paul and John and Neil and that team. <clears throat> um, so having said that, uh, yeah, we play a little bit like them, and, and uh, we can throw the big weight, but, but we don't. We feel it's... Uh, it's an advantage to us to keep the the game, you know, behind guards and and uh, with freezes and and um, that way we're you know we we're able to maneuver and play the kind of shots that we're good at as opposed to the ones that uh, that the other teams are, are may or may not be better than us at. So not well, easy to do. I mean, you see yeah, I mean it do, it doesn't hurt that guys. you have probably the best uh, you know hack weight tap back player in the history of the game at skip. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> We want, we want to keep him throwing those shots, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody throws those better than Glenn. And, no, uh, he's, he's terrific at them, and, and that's, uh, you know, well, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you try to play a style when you have a guy with, with that kind of touch throwing the last one? And, um, um, you know, we're, I would think, you know, we'll continue to do that. And as you said, I mean, we can throw it, throw, throw the big weight when we need to, and uh, but that's just that's the best way for us to to manufacture points is to is to play a softer game. You know, you talk about touch, and uh, you know, both you and Glenn uh, have touch. I'd say you're. I'd say if I was going to call anybody a field player on the ice, Rich, it's you. And it's not right. uh, it's not meant to uh, to uh, say anything about your sometimes wonky looking delivery, but <laughs> uh, but. Uh, uh, do you think we, we do enough with, with young curlers to teach them, hey, you know, you've got to figure out how to make shots, not just be a technician? Well, it, I just think that, that um, you know, when it, when it comes to teaching young people, that you really, you know, there's the basics, and, and that's, you know, slide angle and release. But how they get there is it's just not that important. I mean, uh, I think all you have to do is look at, you know, the top ten teams, in the country, and look how different, you know, everyone's delivery is. I mean, my delivery might be wonky, but 
you know, the same can be said about Don Walchuk or or how about uh, Mark Kennedy? I mean, nobody teaches that, right? You're, you're absolutely right. You, you know, uh, th- those are those are all very different. Uh, st- Randy Furby, you know, there's uh, there's one that you haven't seen taught in quite a while. Uh, Jeff Stoughton, the big Tucker, and um, John Mead again, a big Tucker. I mean, those everybody has their own style, and the most important thing is when you let go of it, and, and whether it's repeatable, right? And um, I think we, you know, I think it's less important to to uh, teach kids the, you know, the flat foot you know, foot goes here as opposed to let them learn to slide naturally and and then uh, sort of uh, get them sliding on the proper angle. And that, that's what I'm teaching my kids anyway. And uh, it would be interesting to see what they turn out. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. You go to a you go to a Grand Slam event or you, or you look at the top 10 teams and very few guys actually deliver the rock uh, according to Curl Canada guidelines. Maybe maybe Glenn and Langer. Right, yeah. Like, And, and here's the other thing. Um, you know, Glenn and Brent both have a, a really nice-looking uh, delivery, but most people, 99% of the people can't repeat, you know, couldn't do that. Exactly. It's, it's like we're it's telling people, possible, so why teach yeah, throw like Glenn Howard and you'll yeah. be fine, right? Yeah. I, I tried for 10 years from, you know, 18 to 28 to slide like Glenn Howard, and I can't do it. So <laughs> I gave up, and that was probably the best thing I ever did. You and everyone else, right? Yeah, right. I mean, your, your body, just everybody's body doesn't go in that, that direction, so... I know you have some thoughts on the uh, on the stats of the Grand Slam events. They're done by our good friend Jerry Gertz uh, through Curling Zone. You know, I like the stats that he provides because I think they are more uh, they're more informative and and I think they uh, they're more demanding of the players. But uh, there is this thing when you turn on a Grand Slam, the percentages are going to look lower than when you turn on a Briar Final uh, because the difference in scoring. Do you think that's something that uh, needs to be addressed? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's a bit of a problem in that, you know, stats are for fans. They're not for the players. I mean, uh, we really don't use them uh, for for tracking other teams. I mean, some people claim they do, but the information is uh, it's not that useful for players. So it's for fans watching, and that's great. But um, if the fans don't fully understand them, which I, I kind of think they don't. I think they, they've just created a bit of confusion that this change in stats. Um, I, I think, you know, maybe we should look at possibly, you know, if we can't convince the CCA that these, you know, these stats are, are better, this system, then we should probably maybe give up after a little bit and maybe maybe all use the same method of, of, of keeping statistics, you know, and I'm not to say that one isn't better than the other, but I just think having the two systems is confusing, and, um, you know, just the discrepancies, you know, that, that, that's all, I mean, um, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't look good, a, a good example is that final game, you know, I know that uh, there was lots of talk in the press about, um, about Blake having a bad game, and I, and I you know, I always, uh, you know, it brings brings emotion uh, up in me when I see you know a, a guy getting a hard time that really doesn't deserve it, and and I think that the part of it may have been the stats show you know I don't know he was in the fifties or something like that I think cause somebody told me and and um, you know I don't think you know I think he missed maybe three key shots other than that you know yeah I think you should you know you miss three shots I don't know if if you you deserve a fifty percent rating and maybe he missed more than that i don't know but it just it didn't it seemed to stick out more than i thought it should have well you know i think uh, one thing they could do is, is um i'd like to see them stick with the stats you guys use in grand slams but i'd love to see the cbc maybe do a bit of education on it. i'd like it to be yeah. the grand slam stat is a tougher event stats you're graded tougher it's like the the masters is a full examination so make the grand slam events uh make sure people know the stats are harder but yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. You, you probably understand them better than I do, too. I mean, I, I don't fully understand the system, but um, you, you know what? If you're going to have them and, and, and put them out there, then then we need yeah, the people need to be educated. So maybe maybe that's all it would take. Yeah. The other thing, though, I mean, don't you think that part of you know a guy getting uh, getting some heat in the in the media for for a poor game? I you know I tend to think that's part of uh, that's good for the game. It's development of the game, more treating it more like a real sport. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you're right. I mean, we just, uh, you know, Monday morning, we got to go back to our jobs, you know. We're not professionals here. And That's a good point. <laughs> and to get raked over the coals so badly is, uh, you know, 
I don't like it personally. But uh, yeah, I mean, we we put ourselves out there. So w- when you do when you do that, uh, I guess you you got to take the glory and you got to take the crap too. I guess I don't know. It's just uh, I don't like to see it. That's all. Yeah, that is a good point. You guys aren't uh, you're not uh, a rod going back with a two hundred fifty right. million dollar contract, are right. you? You know, we're, we, In fact, we really what was your what was your Monday morning like back at Hartwell Electric, Rich? Oh, it was great. You know what? Uh, <laughs> it was uh, when you come off a big win in your hometown, and and uh, a bunch of your your friends and family and and colleagues were out uh, were out at the game and watched it. Uh, um, it, it was it was terrific, and uh, sure beats losing. That's for sure, dude. <laughs> but you still had to come in and do work, right? Oh, absolutely. Monday morning, uh, six thirty. I was in here. Nobody said, "Well, Rich, you won this weekend, so you know, just don't yeah, bother answering the, the week phone." Off, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I will be doing that. Actually, we're leaving tonight for uh, Brooks, Alberta, for the big Cactus Pheasant Classic. We're looking forward to that. That's true. I probably in 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 when you were talking about fields earlier, the Cactus Pheasant probably has even a stronger field, right? Yeah, well, 24 teams and, uh, you know, probably 24 of the best in the world. I don't know. I don't know who's missing. I think Gushu's not going. He's, uh, you're right. He's resting for the, the pre trials, but, uh, I don't know who else is missing, but that's the only one I really know of. Well, yeah, just so I think typically I, well, some, from speaking with the guys, I think all the international teams are going to be there. Um, yeah. What's it like going from, uh, from Toronto to, uh, Cosmopolitan Brooks? It's a little different, but I, I, you know what? I really like Brooks. It was uh, our first year at the event last year, and they do a terrific job down there. And uh, I'm looking forward to going back. Other than you know, we're still tired from from playing on the weekend and uh, and what have you. But hopefully, we'll get a chance to get caught up on some sleep when we get there. All right, uh, we finished with a run back, Rich, as you probably okay. know. Uh, I give you a topic. You give me your thoughts in uh, one to three one to three words. Sure. Uh, then Bob Weeks and his newly found stash of his first curling book, The Briar, The History of Curling's Greatest Championship. I can't wait to get my copy, actually. I uh, sent him an email yesterday. He's got one in the mail for me. All right. Yeah, I, I'm buying one, too. Uh, seven boxes he found, so I don't know how many it's number of books, but uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, the Chinese men running out of time in the seventh against Randy Furby. I don't understand it. I, I, you know what? I thought I, I thought they might have done it on did it on purpose. It, it, uh, it, um, you know, it was like they didn't know there was a clock. Yeah, it's it was it was uh, odd. I, I guess uh, actually, I, I had it wrong. I thought Dan Raphael was just uh, called it a teachable moment or something. Because, uh, but what I heard was that it was it, it got so late that he they said, "Well, should we call a timeout to tell them?" And he said, "Well, it's no use. Don't bother. It's too late." Yeah, yeah. It was that that was unfortunate for the. Well, for the fans, that, that's who, who, you know, the guys don't understand the clock. I mean, these people paid to come watch a curling game, right? It's not the time to be teaching a lesson to some, some curlers. I mean, uh, people are paying to, to watch you. you gotta, you got you to finish your game. That's a good point. Um, your thoughts on thinking time versus running time? Yeah, I like, uh, I like the thinking time. I think it's good. Yeah, much better, I'd say. Yeah. yeah um, right. Randy Furby, uh, now available in a new smaller size. <laughs> um, well, uh, can't wait to see it. I guess I don't know uh, what that size is, but good for him if he's uh, if he's uh, lost some weight. You haven't seen? You didn't notice he lost weight, did he? He's, he's is that what I'm saying? No, I think yeah, Randy looks a little more fit. I don't, I don't think it's that noticeable though. No, I think if you, I think he I think he lost a good uh, good forty. I would guess. Did he? Well, that's got to feel great. Good for him. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, he lost his draw weight with it. <laughs> I don't think so. But anyways, no. he's also the rare guy who can open a bar and start a fitness program in the same summer. Yeah, so. that's right. I heard he's got a new bar up in Edmonton. Best of luck to Randy on that. Yeah, we should give him a little plug here. Randy Furby's the rink. He told me after uh, one night there how it's uh, it's as better than any sports bar. He says with more TVs and everything else. So. Well, when we get up to Edmonton, I'm going to get out and check it out for All sure. Right. I will too. I, I am going to do that. Uh, uh, and finally, Steve Bice back as your alternate. Yeah, uh, number one <laughs> fifth man. It, you, it's a really a good karma thing for you guys with Steve, isn't it? Yeah, you know, he just um, our team's uh, all about personality and fit, and he just fits right in. So it's uh, that's, it's important for us. You know, we um, we've, we've tried other things, and it's just uh, nice to have a guy who who. Uh, who knows us and understands us and uh, can fit in on the team uh, when, whenever we need him. 
Well, there, you know, there's another way you guys are a bit of a throwback, too, Rich, i got to say. Yeah, uh, right. I, yeah, hey, most Steve's teams. Steve McCurl, I mean, don't, uh, you know, he plays on the money. Oh, I know. I, I'm not saying Steve can't play yeah, at all. He's a, yeah, he's a great player. Yeah, he wouldn't come in and skip, though. Right, exactly. Some, guys, <laughs> some teams look for a guy who can come in and play any position. And, uh, yeah, right. No, that's but, not the case. But, of course, you guys won the shorty last year with you at the tee head there. Do you remind Glenn of that from time to time? I don't know, but uh, it does come up in conversation every once in a while. Usually, when we're talking strategy, because we had a we had a secret strategy planned that that week that uh, that paid off for us. A secret Hard to win with your skip curl seventy percent, and that's what we uh, we we found a strategy that, that worked that we could we could win a spiel like that. No, that's a strategy you need to write a book about. Yeah, well, I don't want anybody to know about it just yet in case I have to skip again. <laughs> hey, actually, quickly before we go on strategy, what about um, I, I wrote this on my on the curling show while I was up in Mississauga. That, that Langer, Brent Lang, sure seems to have a big role, a lot of input into strategy in your team. Yeah, he does, and we've been trying to change that all summer long, and I don't know how we're going to do it, but uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> he, he does, and, uh, and it's, a, it's an important, uh, important part of our, our team. You know, we, uh, he, he's got a good feel for, for strategy, as does Craig, and, uh, and when they uh, pick their spots and come in and, and, and make some comments and have some input, it, it's usually pretty relevant, and, um, and it's not unusual for us to, you know, take their advice, and uh, nobody, uh, nobody on our team has any problem with that. That's for sure. Yeah, he often seems to be though the uh, the deciding vote when there's a uh, when there's when there's uh, yeah. when you and Glenn are struggling to reach a decision. Yeah, absolutely. It it, it does sort of work that way, and uh, it's hard to explain. We've got a pretty unique, um, you know, dynamic between the four of us, and and uh, I did read your little. You know, you had just a quick sentence or two there with regard to that and uh it's probably true you know i didn't know i haven't really kept stats on on how often we we take him up on his advice but uh if it's the right shot it's the right shot you just play it right you read everything don't you rich i keep a close eye on things i'm gonna yeah. be careful what i write from now on about you guys. <laughs> i don't know i thought nobody read or listened <laughs> well i was coming on your show i thought i better uh, better pull up your website and go through a few things all right Hey, you know, I give everybody a chance to name their sponsors. I know uh, I've done this for you before, but let me know who you have. Oh, sure. I'd love to. JVC Canada is our title sponsor, Dominion Insurance, a big supporter of curling, Hartwell Electrical, Balance Plus Curling. Um, they are our four sponsors, and, uh, and they're, uh, they're, they've been great to us for the last number of years. And yeah, shout out to Dominion there. for uh, They're starting at the, the club championship there in Canada, and I know... Uh, that's underway throughout Canada. That's a great championship, and I yeah. think uh, you know I, I think a credit to some of the players too, because my understanding is they sort of started out by sponsoring teams of an, and have expanded that role. Yeah, isn't that something? Eh? You know that that company has a big involvement here in Canada. I believe they're a, they're a CCA sponsor as well, and uh, <clears throat> you know kudos to those guys and what what they've done for our sport. All right, Rich. Well, thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to the day job before you head out this weekend to, uh, tonight to Brooks. And yep. uh, good luck out there and good luck the rest of the season. Very good. Thanks for having me on, Dean. That's Richard Hart on The Curling Show. Remember that while few of us can curl as well as Rich, we can get ourselves into better shape for this great sport. And a good start on that effort is picking up a copy of Fit to Curl by John Morris. Available at fittocurl.com and at Pro Shops. As always, thanks for listening. Here's a spoonful of black pudding. Get an entire bowl in the iTunes store.